Thank you. Um, it, it is my second time here, and uh, I really felt quite at home today. I, I'm staying in Warrnambool, and uh, I called for a lift into Port Ferry, and this fella picked me up, and of course, he's a complete stranger. And uh, we got to talking, and I said, uh, you wouldn't happen to know Shane Howard, would you? And he said, oh, yes, he said, I know Shane Howard. I said, oh, well, and we talked about that for a bit. And then I said, uh, you wouldn't happen to know a fellow by the name of Arthur Hoey, or Howie. And he said, oh, yes, I know Arthur. And by the time we finished the conversation, he knew five people I knew. So uh, I felt quite at home. But uh, I want to thank you uh, for coming, and uh, I want to thank... Uh, uh, the uh, owners of the business here to, for having me, Blarney Books. And um, when I was asked to do a workshop, um, I, I feel like I'm very much an unschooled poet. I, I don't feel like I um, uh, know enough about the nuts and bolts of poetry to, to try to teach poetry. So I thought what I would do is I would uh, talk about the things that inspire me and uh, read some examples uh, of poems that uh, have come from various uh, inspirations. And I'll start with a fellow by the name of Marc Chagall, who was a, a, a French-Russian painter who I've loved since I was a child. And uh, one day I was uh, resting, and I started to think, I was going to take a nap, and I started to think, uh, what would it have been like if Chagall had painted... Uh, Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And as I thought about it, I, the images kept coming and coming, and I was thinking, geez, I, I've got to remember this. I think I'll write a poem when I, when I get up. And, but it just kept coming, and I said, okay, I'm going to get up and, and write a poem. And so I got out of bed, and I scribbled down all these images that I had had uh, in my head, and I ended up uh, was something that I called Christ and Chagall at the gates of Jerusalem. So I'll read that to you now. And he did ride unto Jerusalem upon the timid foal of a donkey, never ridden, and it was blue and deep as autumn's crisping sky. And on his smooth shoulders he wore a robe the color of blood, and the very stones did cry out to him, and the day was golden as amber steps and streams of honey, surrounded by April wheat, the color of the sun. And the horizon did bleed streaks of saffron like a newborn's tears for Friday afternoon. And a warm wind blew behind him, braided with lavender and lilac and sweet jasmine, like a gift from the east. Upon his head a crown of light imperceptible to the human eye, like a far-off nebula, a million light-years across, but seen with the heart beneath a ribcage that would spread itself for one small glance, like the sting of the honeybee, a selfless act to put oneself before another. And the faces of the people were like springtime, where blossoms white betray the pink of infancy, and the greenish shoots leap toward heaven from the cracked and thirsty earth. And the prayers of the innocent did flow like sweet water in the desert before the feral sun should carry it to paradise on the back of an updraft like the Pegasus, who will not suffer to plod upon the land. And the very gates of the city shook as the plates of the earth awaited their instructions, and the sun prepared to hide itself away for the answer to the question of that justice had arrived to sate the hungry gate unto the holy city, what is truth? <laughs> 